welcome you all back for the pollination video part 2 hope you would have watched pollination part 1 video and understood the concept types and agencies of pollination in this part 2 we will learn about some special mechanisms of pollination flowering plants have co-evolved with their pollinators partners over millions of years producing a fascinating and interesting diversity of floral strategies and pollinator adaptations few mechanisms like lever mechanism trap mechanism translator mechanism piston mechanism etc are explained in this video let us move on to the video the flower of salvia is adapted for bee pollination the corolla is bilabiate having upper lip and lower lip with two stamens a lever mechanism helps in pollination each anther has upper fertile lobe and lower sterile lobe which is separated by a long connective which helps the anther swing freely when a bee visits a flower it sits on the lower lip which acts as a platform it enters the flower to suck the nectar by pushing its head into the corolla during the entry of the bee into the flower the body strikes against the sterile end of the connective this makes the fertile part of the stamen to descend and strike at the back of the bee the pollen gets deposited on the back of the bee when it visits another flower the pollen gets rubbed against the stigma and completes the act of pollination pollination in calotropis is called as translator mechanism stigma is pentagonal and is fused with andrisium to form gynostegium the stamens of calotropis produce pollinium you may see the pentagonal stigma and the pollinia attached to the cornice in this picture two pollinia are found attached to a glandular adhesive disc called corpusculum by a thread like structure called retinoculum the whole structure looks like inverted letter y and is called a translator when an insect visits gynostegium part of the flower the pollinium pair called the translator is detached from the flower and gets attached to the legs or the sucking mouth parts of the insect when the bee flies away hope you can see the pollinium attached on the legs of the insect when this insect visits another flower the pollinium falls on the stigma thus ensuring pollination papanaceous members have piston mechanism of pollination the flowers are variously colored and sweet scented the flowers have papanaceous corolla the pea flowers are made up of five petals that are of different sizes and shapes the picture shows various flower parts the large lobed petal at the top is called the banner or a standard petal below the banner or a pair of petals called wings and between the wings two petals fuse together to form the keel which covers the male and the female parts of the flower the andrisium and gynesium respectively because of the resemblance to a butterfly the corolla of pea flowers are called papilionaceous papilion means a butterfly in latin these plants have 10 stamens nine stamens are arranged in a bundle and one remains free as it is seen in the image the filaments are united into two bundles but the anther remains free such a condition is called diadelphus gynesium is monocarpellary superior and unilocular as i mentioned earlier the andrisium and gynesium are enclosed by keel petal pollination in pea plants occur in two ways self and cross pollination and of course self pollination occurs when the flowers are closed 
and the pollen from the plant falls on the stigma of the same plant and this happens before the flowers open this adaptation reduces the chance of genetic variability the flowers are adapted for cross pollination when a pollinator such as a bee enters the plant to drink nectar and picks up the pollen grains while it is there the bee lands on the petals and inserts proboscis in the flower for nectar this makes the wing petal and keel petal to push down and in this process the pollen grains from the anther are dusted on the body of the bee and also attached to the proboscis of the bee so you can see in the video how the pollen grains are dusted on the body of the insects when the pollinator moves to the next flower the grains are transferred to the stigma of the another flower and it gets pollinated pollination in aristolochia is by trap mechanism all the aristolochia are pollinated by saprophagus flies which uh, normally visit dead animals and dung they are attracted to flowers that mimic these odoriferous items they obtain no reward and would quickly leave but the plants have traps to slow down and in this struggle pollination occurs aristolochia readily attracts attention because of the unusual shape of the flowers and often by their coloring large size and also by unpleasant odor you can see the unusual shape and size of the flower in this picture see for the flowers consisting of a basal bulb and an open flaring face connected by a long tube you may also observe the tube lined with hinged hairs and the bulb possesses transparent spots called windows near its base the flowers open in the morning and the insects are attracted by the odor and they enter the tube from which their escape is prevented by that lining of hinged hairs proceeding to the bulb the penetrating light through the spots in the bulb attracts the insects to the vicinity of the stigma and the stamens the stigma and the stamens are right at the base of the bulb the stigma is receptive as soon as the flower opens while the pollen is shed only in the night as soon as the anthers of the flower ripe the hairs wither and the flower bends down the flies escape with the pollen and enter another flower where it dusts pollen on the stigma bringing out pollination to help in the insects release the floral odor disappears color cues change has relax and the constricting areas of the tube are opened when the hairs wilt leaving a clear passage for the flies to transverse after which many find their way to a new set of flowers the pollination in fig is a fine example of coevolution the inflorescence of fig is a special type called hypanthodium uh, before learning about the pollination let us just uh, learn about the structure of hypanthodium briefly the receptacle is fleshy and forms a hollow ball like structure opening outside by a small opening called ostiole the female flowers you can see they are towards the base and the male flowers towards the ostiole and this inflorescence is mutually associated and pollinated by gall wasps the wasps actually commit reproductive suicide all the figs are not pollinated the common figs are parthenocarpic and can develop without pollination when the female flowers are ready for pollination the receptive fig emits an enticing aroma that attracts only female wasps the wasp finds the fig by its scent and struggles to get inside through the small opening the ostiole 
it is a such a tight passage that the wasp usually loses its wings and pieces of antenna we can recognize figs uh, that were visited by wasps you can see just by looking their wings left at the ostiole entry once inside the wasp moves from flower to flower laying eggs and also spreading the pollen it has brought with it from the fig where it is born having fulfilled her life's mission the female wasp dies inside the fig the eggs after completing their full development in a few weeks emerge from inside the seeds the male emerge first and start looking for the females to mate mate with you may see for the smaller size of the male than the females and do not even have wings they will never fly after mating they like the mother die inside the fig that was their home all their lives see for the females emerging out and ready to find another fig to lay their eggs for leaving their home the females will remember to take a supply of pollen to carry to the next fig at this point the male flowers inside the fig are ripe and loaded with pollen this incredible partnership requires very fine tuning and synchronicity of the part of the plant and of the pollinator pollination is another interesting mechanism of pollination it is also called as a sonication method several important food crops are best pollinated including tomato brinjal kiwi and blueberry buzz pollination is a technique used by bees to release pollen which is more or less firmly held by the anthers the anthers of buzz pollinated plant species are typically tubular with an opening at the end one end and the pollen inside is smooth grained and firmly attached with self fertilized plants such as tomatoes wind may be sufficient to, to shake loose the pollen through pores in the anthers and accomplish pollination visits by bees may also shake loose some pollen but more efficient pollination of those plants is accomplished by a few insect species who spe are specialized in sonication or buzz pollination bumblebee buzz pollination is observed in solanum species in order to release the pollen solitary bees are able to grab onto the flower and move their flight muscles rapidly causing the flower and anthers to vibrate disloading the pollen you can just see in the uh, video how the bees move their flight muscles and the anthers being disloaded during buzz pollination bees use their thoracic muscles to produce uh, very high frequency vibrations uh, maybe hundreds of cycles per second and these vibrations pollen carrying the plants male gametes to bounce inside the anthers and eventually be forcefully propelled outside the anther uh, you can see how the anthers uh, the pollen grains are being propelled outside and uh, it may also be dusted on the bee's body pollination involving vibrations is called buzz pollination pollination in yucca is by a moth the moth is called yucca moth because of the most extraordinary partnership between the moth and the plant they are so interdependent that one cannot live without the other the yucca moth is a small whitish moth and you may see that the color of the moth blends well with the color of the yucca blossoms where it spends most of its adult life A very distinctive feature of the moth is 
it has tentacles around its mouth that serve a very important function and make possible its job as a pollinator the adult yucca moth does not need to feed because it is so short lived however the female gathers pollen which it holds under its chin with the help of the tentacles males and females emerge from their cocoons uh, in the spring in synchrony with the blossoming of the species of yucca uh, with which they are partners they meet and mate on the yucca blossoms and then the job of the females starts The female yucca moth visits the anthers of the flower and scraps the pollen from several of them shaping into a, a large lump then she leaves in search of another inflorescence not just another flower in the same bunch but in a different plant altogether assuring in this manner the cross pollination of the yucca when she arrives at a new plant she inspects the flowers and chooses the ones that are at the right stage she also checks if there are already eggs laid in the flowers ovary she can detect the smell of the other female moths with her antenna and if another one has been there already uh, actually she searches for another flower uh, this uh, uh, this is good actually for the plant and for the future babies because if too many eggs were laid in one flower ovary the flower would abort and the larvae would starve she lays her eggs in the ovary uh, not more than a handful once again uh, if she laid too many eggs the flower would abort afterwards she goes to the stigma of the flower and carefully removes uh, some pollen from under his under her chin and deposits it on the stigma now the flower will produce a fruit and enough seeds to feed the larvae as well as to ensure the reproduction of the plant thus the relationship between yucca moth and yucca plant is an example of obligate mutualism ophirus apifera commonly known as bee orchid serves as an example of sexually deceptive pollination and floral mimicry as well as of a highly selective and highly evolved plant pollinator relationship you can see the flower spike which is composed of 1 to 12 flowers and this is the flower of ophirus with the three large purple sepals surrounding the base of the flower the petals lie just above the sepals as two short pubescent green structures protruding laterally from a central column a third modified petal the labellum uh, it sits at the bottom of the column as a, a landing pad for pollinators the labellum is trilobed with two pronounced humps on the hairy lateral lobes and a hairy median lobe having a pattern that mimics the female bee in size shape and markings we can just see for the resemblance of this labellum with the bees the male bee gets attracted to it as it perceives it as a female bee it pseudo copulates with the flower and during this process it gets dusted with the pollen when this bee sits on another flower for pseudo copulation it transfers the pollen to the other flower and thereby pollinates it hope this video would have made it interesting to learn about the fascinating mechanisms of pollination you might have understood how plants entice the pollinators to visit the flower and successfully pollinate it some flowers use entrapment as a means of pollination they may use a combination of other strategies such as visual cues scent food or mimicry to attract the pollinator plants and their pollinators form a mutualistic relationship a relationship in which 
each benefits from the other in the plant pollinator relationship the pollinator benefits by feeding on food rewards provided by the flower primarily nectar and pollen in return the plant benefits as the pollinator moves from flower to flower transferring pollen as it forages for the food rewards this movement of pollen allows the plant to reproduce and to exchange genetic information with other plants this relationship between plants and pollinators makes wonder in sustaining the ecosystem this video is to create awareness not only about the special mechanisms of pollination but also to insist on the importance of biodiversity and its conservation thank you